Did you know? The American robin is one of our most familiar and beloved birds, so much so that it is the state bird of three states, Connecticut, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Adults measure about 25 centimeters long and weigh 77 grams, making them to be the largest thrush in North America. And they can be found all across, from Alaska to Newfoundland and Florida to California. They live on average about one and a half years, but according to bird banding records, the oldest known robin found in the wild was almost 14 years old. The American robin wasn't always a bird you'd see in cities and towns. Originally, it was a forest species. They ended up adapting to residential areas because they love using the short manicured lawns to find food such as earthworms. Some people consider American robins as harbingers of spring, but actually many American robins spend their whole winter in their breeding range. We don't see them because with no insects to be had, they change their diet to fruits and berries, thus staying in moist, dense forests that produce berry shrubs and plants. However, sometimes they do appear in people's backyards, usually in a flock gathered in a crabapple tree or shamak bush, devouring the fruits and berries. And as with any berry-eating bird, sometimes robins can become intoxicated after consuming too much. In winter, robins are nomadic, meaning they wander irregularly. The same individual robin may winter one year in Texas, one year in Florida, and one year in Wisconsin. Robin roosts during winter can be huge, sometimes including a quarter million birds. In summer, females sleep at their nests and males continue to gather at roosts. As young robins become independent, they join the males, but for adult females, it's only after they have finished nesting that they go back to spending their nights at roosts again. Exceptionally adaptable, robins nest from urban centers and backyards to remote wilderness areas above the Arctic Circle. There is hardly a habitat they won't nest in. Each spring, robins usually return to the same area to nest, and they may even occasionally use last year's nest again after some renovations. In one year, an American robin can produce three successful broods. However, on average, only 40% of nests successfully produce young, and only 25% of those fledged young survive to November. From that point on, about half of the robins alive in any year will make it to the next. Many people think that earthworms are their favorite food, but actually worms only make up about 15 to 20% of their summer diet. The rest is made up of other insects, fruits, and berries. Depending on the time of day, robins eat different types of food, more earthworms in the morning and more fruit later in the day. Contrary to popular belief, American robins don't find earthworms by hearing or smelling them. They find earthworms by cocking their head to one side and independently using each eye to look for visible signs of worms. Because they use lawns to find food, they are pretty vulnerable to pesticide poisoning, so it's probably best for the robin if you refrain from using poisonous pesticides on your lawn. Lead left over from the days of leaded gasoline and paint contaminates suburban soil, and soil often adheres to the slimy skin of worms. Thus, robins, both adults and nestlings, have lead levels in their blood that are roughly twice as high as robins from rural areas, and the amount of lead in their blood suggests that some symptoms of lead poisoning are being manifested. But a more recent problem for robins is the spread of mosquito-borne West Nile virus, a disease that can kill birds. Researchers have found that robins appear to be a favored target of mosquitoes, and many have the antibodies to the virus in their blood, which means they were infected but have survived. Although many robins have succumbed to lead poisoning, viral infections, and many other hazards of suburban life, such as predatory cats and flying into windows and so forth, robin populations as a whole monitored across North America for the last 40 years have slowly increased. The ability of the American robin to adapt its lifestyle to match ours has allowed it to thrive, whereas many other migratory bird populations have declined. And also, did you know that early English settlers named the American robin after their beloved European robin from back home? For more, check out my video, Did You Know Birding? How the American robin got its name. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Happy birding!